The ASA Quick Trip Midwest Tour presented by Echo Outdoor Power Equipment rolls into Norway, Michigan on a holiday weekend. It's the Labor Day 100 at Norway Speedway. What a way to highlight Fair Week. This event drew a huge crowd last year and fans are lined up early to see the cars and stars of the Midwest Tour. The souvenir stands are ready for business and so are the racers. Championship leader Dan Fredrickson's point lead is down to five after mechanical trouble at Shakopee, Minnesota and at Milwaukee. And Fredrickson's never raced here. A couple bad weeks, like you said, tightened it up. We had over 100 points in the lead and now we're down five, so. Uh, just, I guess, keep racing like we have been and try to finish the races, I guess, would be the main thing. Had a couple of failures and stuff on the car that took us out of the last two races, so just try to be a little more prepared than what we have been. Right behind is Dundas, Minnesota's Donnie Reavers, who finished second in the championship race a year ago and came home second in this event last year also. Last year when we were here, um, we ran real good and we were able to get up to the front and hopefully we can do the same thing. You know, it's uh, it was a good race last year. We didn't have to, you know, bump anybody to get up there and, um, you know, it's something that we really work hard at doing. So hopefully we can do the same thing. And the leaders have company with Wisconsin drivers Chris Wimmer in the 52 and Iowa race winner Tim Schendel in the 21 car within striking distance. In addition to the tightening points race, there's a second storyline developing here. This event in Norway is essentially a home game for Northern Michigan drivers Chris Kelly and Jamie Iverson. Iverson, the seven-time track champion here, is the defending race champion in this event. It was a good feeling, you know, the crowd was really behind us 100%. I know I talked to Donnie's crew and they said it was unbelievable. I could hear the crowd from the pit screaming when they'd get close to me and stuff. But uh, uh, it's good to do it in front of your family and friends and fans and, you know, it was one of our bigger wins. Chris Kelly, like Jamie Iverson, is a second generation driver. He's from right here in Norway, Michigan. Yeah, there's definitely uh, some awesome people. Uh, you know, I've been racing out of town now the last couple of years. And they, uh, they still, you know, they keep track of what we got going on. You know, they're on our website all the time. And uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, people from, from town really support our team. And they, uh, they're, they're going to be out here today. So it's going to be uh, hopefully, a, hopefully a good deal. And uh, hopefully we can put on a good show for them. They deserve it. Chris Wimmer will pick up points in qualifying, setting fast time. And this crowd is ready for some racing. In the first of two qualifying races, there's contact between the 119 of Dalton Zare and Bob Danis in the 95 car. Danis gets the worst of things, and he's around with damage. We're under yellow. Midwest Tour regulars Russ Blakely and Rich Locke in the 22 and 55 are running first and second, with Mike Reichenberger third in the one, and Zare back up to fourth. The top three make it into the feature, and the 119 is fast, but at the line, it's Blakely, Locke, and Reichenberger advancing. In the second qualifier, it's the two of Bonduel, Wisconsin's Dylan Kralovitz out front with Tour regular Mark Krause right there in the nine. Krause is coming off an impressive fourth place finish at the Milwaukee Mile. Goodhue, Minnesota's Brian Roche in the 99 holds the third and final transfer spot ahead of Freedom, Wisconsin racer Kyle Kalmus. Last lap and Kralovitz will hold off Krause for the win with Roche also making the show. Championship points are at stake in the fast heats and it's point leader Dan Fredrickson on the front row along with Andrew Morrissey in the 39. Fredrickson out of Elko, Minnesota came into the night with that slim five point lead over Donnie Reavers. Watch this, three wide as Chris Wimmer and Jeff Storm in the 25 past Travis Sauter. Dan Fredrickson will lead the entire race and try to race his way to a championship. I think I'm just gonna race as hard as I can and uh, just let things fall where they, where they are gonna fall. I mean, I can't really do anything differently just because we're racing for points or that we're running closer now than we were before. I mean, just race as hard as we can and, and race it out hopefully would be the nice thing. In the second fast heat, it's hometown favorite Chris Kelly on the front row along with the double zero of Wisconsin's Greg Hayes. Kelly and Hayes have raced with each other a lot in weekly competition at Wisconsin International Raceway. Right there in third is Jamie Iverson and the 97 and 77 make contact. Kelly goes around and both he and Iverson will go to the back of the field. Up front, Hayes is getting heat from another young Wisconsin racer. That's Tom G. Jr. in the 36. Hayes will hold on for the win, 
and hopes to make some noise in the feature. Oh yeah, this, we can win this probably one of the biggest ones. I mean, we won the Red, White, and Blue series. We won a lot of features, Kakana and Swinger. We won the big feature up here, but for a regular ASA sanctioned event, that'd be a really big show to win. Two spots are at stake in the last chance race, and it's Dalton Zare and Kyle Kalmus bringing the field to green. Kalmus finished second in the tour event at Wisconsin International Raceway and makes the pass on the outside to take the lead. Back in the pack, it's Bob Danis in the 95 trying to work through traffic. Joey Miller runs second in the 19, and Zare is third in the 119 car. The red Gene Coleman number 119 is legendary in this part of Michigan. Up front, Kalmus will get the job done. He and Joey Miller transfer to the feature. I could tell I had a pretty good car, and once I got out the lead, uh, a 119, he did a great job not pressuring me. He was smart enough to know that as long as we stayed out of each other's way and stayed up front that we'd make it into features so we were able to save tires and I figured if I could do my best saving tires I had a chance to knock off a few spots in the feature. When we come back, highlights from the Labor Day 100 at Norway Speedway. Lawn maintenance professionals around the world have relied on Skag mowers for more than 20 years. Now you too can have the same quality and reliability the professionals count on for your lawn. The new Skag Freedom Z can cut your mowing time in half and give your lawn that beautiful professional cut appearance. Skag mowers, proudly made in the USA. We're ready for 100 laps on this tight third mile oval. We've seen some passing on the outside in the preliminaries. Will that hold true in the feature? Dan Fredrickson in the 36 and Jamie Iverson in the 97 bring the field to green and we're underway. Fredrickson, the all-time ASA Midwest Tour wins leader and Iverson, the seven-time Norway track champion. Right behind its tour regular Andrew Morrissey in the 39 and the 36 car of Tom G. Jr. Strong in the fast heat. Farther back, it's Norway's Chris Kelly and the blue 77 of Minnesota racer Jonathan Island. Up front, it's Iverson trying to hold off Fredrickson. There's contact between the leaders and a big mess in turn one. The 77 cars of Kelly and Island. Defending series champ Nathan Hosley's 87. Blake Horstman in that 75, just some of the cars involved. Mark Krause's black nine car is torn up. And that's Donnie Reavers in the pits, second in series points, but off the track. We're back to green flag racing, and the battle for the lead resumes. It's Fredrickson looking to get it done on the outside, and the Midwest Tour point leader takes the top spot away from Jamie Iverson. Chris Kelly is trying to make the best of a bad situation, but he's losing the back end of that race car. Hoslide, the defending champion, will try to work his way to the front, racing with the two of Dylan Kralovitz. And it's Dalton Zare and Bob Danis going around. More fireworks tonight. Donnie Reavers is back out, but laps down. He takes a big hit in the point standings. It's Fredrickson and Iverson running 1-2. Andrew Morrissey is right there in third. Fourth and fifth, it's touring stars Travis Sauter in the five and Chris Wimmer in the 52. The yellow will fly a number of times tonight. This one involves Hosley and Horstman again, among others. Back under green, and it's Iverson putting the heat on Fredrickson. These two are really battling, and Iverson will look to the outside. Jamie Iverson is going to get it done on the high side and retake the lead. His father, Bob Iverson, is a 10-time champion here, a member of the Michigan Motorsports Hall of Fame. And Jamie Iverson will continue that family tradition with a win in the Labor Day 100 at Norway Speedway. It means a lot, you know, I mean, like I say, just to race Danny like we did and to race for 100 laps like that, nose to tail, side by side, you know, that's an honor in itself. Like I say, I got a lot of respect for Danny. He's a great racer and... Uh, I just think I raced him like you raced me and uh, put on a good show for the crowd. The ASA Quick Trip Midwest Tour is presented by Echo Outdoor Power Equipment. Special thanks to Skag Power Equipment, Hype Energy Drink, and Pony Express Motor Coaches. I'm Bill Holland with your ASA Midwest Tour online update. Next tour stop, September 7th, Marshfield Speedway in Marshfield, Wisconsin. The Kim Parsons Memorial 100.